Bert Backrack and I have been sitting here having a conversation about things that we used to want to be, and, and you, you tell yours, I'll tell well, mine. you tell yours first, ladies first. Oh, well, all right. I told him that, you know, I wanted to be a nun until I was about six. <laughs> and I told Bobby that uh, about that time I wanted to be a jockey, and that gave way later on to uh, wanting to be a football player, preferably a quarterback. Uh, my dad was a football player. And uh, I just wanted to be like him. He went to VMI, which was a military school. So you grow up thinking, I want to go to VMI, wear a uniform, both kinds of uniforms, football uniform and um, military uniform, and play football like my dad. So instead, never instead you wind up being an Academy Award winner <laughs> <laughs> and probably a millionaire by now. If you have any kind of a decent manager at all, you ought to be pretty well fixed by now. I sure hope he's a decent manager. <laughs> 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 Stay well, Fred, wherever you are. Bert, I always like to ask Academy Award winners where they keep their Oscars. Where are yours? They're in the house in the living room. The funny thing about it, you know, uh, for me anyway, is that the actual accomplishment, you know, of getting it, that moment of getting something that is so treasured and, you know, you've got to really say that really is a, a great feeling to win that. But once it's home, I mean, it could be anywhere. It just, and I think after I get it home, uh, I did have it on Nikki, Nikki's table the next morning, both of them on a breakfast table. And um, then they went in the living room. And I, I sort of remembered walking around the house for about a week. And I thought, it's been about six days since I really said, there they are. Aren't they beautiful or something? You know, it ceases to really have the importance that it had, the, the magic of winning it. And once it's won, I mean, it's been but kind of you go, no, you can't look at a relic you can't look at a treasure but they are beautiful to have in the house i want to tell you well, and kids in the neighborhood the come by and they want to feel it you know how it's very heavy you know my they're very heavy and uh the water man would come to the house and he'd want to feel it they the water man <laughs> 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 yeah we drink uh you know the, what kind of water arrowhead puritus water right? apparently our tap water is not the greatest and Los Angeles, Beverly Hills. Have you written a song for the Waterman? No, but I paid him. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever written a song especially for Angie or your little daughter? I think probably indirectly. I wrote a song for Nikki uh, that was called Nikki. It was never a, never a hit. I liked the, the theme. It was an instrumental. Wrote it for her shortly after, um, not shortly after she got home from the hospital. So it was, even though it wasn't a hit, it was wonderful to be able to send the records to all the nurses in the hospital and all the doctors that took care of her. And uh, I said, well, there's a song written for that little darling girl. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that you write indirectly for, well, the people you love. And uh, not specific, you know, I'm not saying it. Now I'm very happy, so I'll sit down and write a very happy song. It's sort of an accumulation, you know, a stockpile, Bobby, of everything you feel. Bert, you really have popularized the new form of music, uh, while others had gotten away from 32 bars on occasion. You were the guy who really got more and more people doing that. Now, what inspired you first to break away from the 32 bars? I guess I was bored with the 32 bars, or I found that I couldn't uh, live with that, the 32 bar structure. But uh, what I seemed to be doing was normal for myself and was not very adventuresome. I mean, I wasn't breaking rules just to break rules. I was just doing something that, it's a very selfish thing, you know, writing, because you do it by yourself and you do it for yourself and you do it to please yourself, really, and you do it alone. And then if it uh, satisfies and gratifies other people, that's wonderful. It's a wonderful happening. Was there e an ever any resistance, though, to that when you were? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah. Tremendous resistance from the record people and all. And they'd say, nobody can dance to this. Wait a minute, this is a waltz. And they'd say, well, what's new pussycat? Well, how are you going to dance to that in a discotheque? It's a waltz. You know, well, they'll find a way. You know, just put that record on the turntable and people, uh, promises, promises, the title song, that, that is really more difficult than it should be. And that changes practically every bar, the meter. 
I mean, I've never seen a dance floor clear so quickly as this club <laughs> in New York. <laughs> Bert, thank you so much well, for talking with us today. It's thank been you a for real having ball. me here, and I, you know, happy to be back in Dallas. Yes, and we understand you're coming back in November, so we look forward to that. Too. I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, Bert. Thank you. Thank you.